In this video, we're going to look at the advanced order types on GDAX. I'm going to show you how to get started using market orders, limit orders, stop orders, and stop limit orders. Let's do a quick overview of all of the order types offered on the GDAX platform. If you've already been following the GDAX playlist on the Deep Lizard channel, use this video as a way to check your understanding of how these orders should be used. If you're here for the first time, this video will get you started. And if you're interested in taking a deeper look, just check out all of the content on the channel. Specifically, take a look at the GDAX playlist. And if you can't find what you're looking for, just ask. Right now, we're ready to go ahead and jump into GDAX and get started. In the order form section on the left, we can see the available order types, market, limit, stop, and inside of the stop, we have the ability to create a stop limit. The reason these order types are called advanced order types is because they are designed for a marketplace where the price is not fixed, but changing in real time. If you are new to trading, you might be used to being quoted a fixed price when you're making a purchase of a good or a service. But when we are trading in a marketplace, there are many buyers and sellers. The buyers have bidding prices and the sellers have asking prices. And depending on which side we are on, if we are buying or selling, we must find a match if we want to trade. When a buyer and a seller agree on a price, a trade can be made. To see the currently available prices in the marketplace, we look to the order book. There are sellers in red who are willing to sell at these prices. And there are buyers in green who are willing to buy at these prices. These market participants make it possible for others to take the trade that they are offering. As a result, they are called the makers. Anyone who takes any of these offers is said to be a taker. Now to learn more about these concepts, check out the other videos in the GDAX playlist on the Deep Lizard channel. For now, this this information is good enough to get us started, so let's do it. The first order type is called a market order. This order type is the simplest of the three, and when we place a buy side market order, the order matches or fills at the lowest asking price on the order book. When we place a sell side market order, the order matches or fills with the highest bidding price on the order book. The order book can change very quickly, and so we usually avoid market orders for this reason. Now, we can achieve the same behavior that market orders give us by using limit orders. This fact makes limit orders the preferred choice when we're choosing our order types. There are two primary issues with market orders. The first issue is that there is no limit price. This means that any price is valid when the order is being matched. Although market orders execute at the best available prices on the order book, these prices can change quickly, so we have to be aware of that. To see an extreme example of this, see the flash crash video from the GDAX playlist. The second issue is that if the order is large, slippage can occur and there is no limit to how far the price can slip as the order is being filled. If you wanna learn more about slippage, see the slippage video in the GDAX playlist as well. Our next type is the limit order. Limit orders behave just like market orders, but they have limits. These limits shield us from the pitfalls that we saw with market orders. Buy side limit orders give us the ability to specify a maximum price. If the maximum price for a buy order is at or above the lowest asking price, the order will match or fill at the lowest asking price, just like with market orders. In this case, allow taker must be selected. And this is because orders at the lowest asking price will be taken from the book to fill our order. If our order slips when filling or the lowest asking price moves quickly, the limit will apply. This is why it is preferred to use limit orders instead of market orders. If the limit price is below the lowest asking price, the order will post to the book as a maker. In this case, the order will sit on the buy side of the order book until a taker matches with the order. For this to happen, the price must drop. 
Now, on the other hand, sell side limit orders give us the ability to specify a minimum price. If the minimum price is at or below the highest bidding price, the order will fill or match. Or we could also say take at the highest bidding price. And this is just like the market order. The difference is that the limit protects us from the pitfalls of the market order. And again, we must choose allow taker here. If the minimum is higher than the highest bidding price, the order will post to the book as a maker and must wait for a taker before it is filled. In this case, the price must rise before the order is filled. Next, we have stop orders. Stop orders are delayed market orders. If we use plain market orders without a stop, the order is matched with an order on the book immediately. But with stop orders, we can delay this matching process until the price rises or falls. Sell side stop orders allow us to delay our market order until the price falls. This allows us to put our sell side market order below the market price on the buy side of the order book. Sell side stop orders are stop losses for long positions. A sell side stop order is triggered when the last trading price is at or below the stop price. When this occurs, the order changes to a market order and matches with the highest bidding price at that particular time. A buy side stop order allows us to delay our market order until the price rises. This allows us to put a buy side market order above the market price on the sell side of the order book. Buy side stop orders are stop losses for short positions. A buy side stop order is triggered when the last trading price is at or above the stop price. When this occurs, the delay is over and a buy side market order is submitted. The market order will match at the lowest asking price on the book at the time the trigger event occurs. We want to avoid using stop orders that don't have limit prices. This is because they turn into market orders when the trigger event occurs. And like we have already seen, market orders can execute at any price since there are no limits. When using stops, we should always specify a limit price. Stop orders that have a limit price are called stop limit orders. Stop limit orders are delayed limit orders. The delay works in the same way that it works for plain stop orders. The difference is that when the stop is triggered, the order turns into a limit order opposed to a market order. When we looked at limit orders, we saw that they can either be a maker or a taker. This depends on the limit price. When we are using stops, we want our orders to be takers. This ensures that we get a match immediately. If we set our limit price up in such a way that the order posts to the order book as a maker, it can sit there indefinitely as the price goes against us. For sell side stop limit orders, this means that we want to put our limit price below our stop. This ensures that the stop is triggered before the price falls below our limit or minimum. There should be bidders on the order book above our limit that our order can take to make a match. For buy side stop limit orders, we want to put our limit price above our stop price. This ensures that the stop will be triggered when the price is on its way up before the price rises above our limit or our maximum. This makes it likely that there will be asking prices that are below our max that can be used to fill our order. One very important thing to note about stop limit orders is that there is no guarantee that the order will be filled. No matter how large the gap between the limit price and the stop price, it is possible that the price blows past the limit, leaving it in the dust with the order just sitting on the order book. This just depends on which order Order triggers the stop and how many taker orders are already in line waiting to take because whenever our limit order is submitted it must get in line behind any orders that were already waiting to take this means that we cannot solely rely on stop limits to protect our positions we can't simply just set a stop limit and assume that our position is protected at that particular spot there's always a risk that we may not get a fill so you have to keep that in mind when you're using Using stop limits. If you want to learn more about these order types and order execution, check out the GDAX playlist on the Deep Lizard channel.